So when I first started trying to learn how to do multifamily underwriting years and years ago, I went on YouTube because like I'm just a contractor at heart. I'm an idiot. Okay. I'm not as smart as this guy right here. I've got Bo with me. And if you go to YouTube right now and you type in how to underwrite multifamily, not one single video will actually teach you how to underwrite multifamily. It's not possible. It's not there. A bunch of people, like 20 videos all stacked up. You take all of them, you watch all of those videos. You will not learn 1% of what it requires to underwrite a multifamily property. So what I'm to do for you guys is I'm going to have Bo and me underwrite one of our properties that we own. Could be the RV park, could be one of the other multifamily deals that Bo's acquired and we'll underwrite it and we'll go through Bo's process and we'll give that video away to you guys. Link in the description. Okay. Now the point of this video is because Bo and I are currently and with Armand and with Eric, we are in Lubbock, Texas. Yesterday we flew into Amarillo. We came to Amarillo to look at two properties that we own right across the street from each other. And we drove down to Lubbock last night and we visited a property this morning that I freaking love. That's a 19 unit deal downtown in Lubbock, super cute. And Bo and the team have released the entire property and it's making a, making money and making moves, which is great. So Bo tells me, hey, I wanna go check out this other property. And that property's right here. So we're gonna go look around this property. And Bo says, hey, you know, we could buy this. And I said, okay, great, tell me about the deal. So Bo, tell me about this deal that we're gonna be driving around for a second and tell me what is appealing about it first. Okay, I think it's like 31 units. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I think it's like 31 units, you know, same seller as the other properties that we've bought from ease of executions there. You know, it's, it, it's in a, you can just tell by the area that there's been so a lot of development ease of for execution. student housing. Eric, what does that mean? Ease of execution? Yeah. So I'll let me, to, yeah, let me, let me convert. To get the deal done to get it across the finish line. This is called vocabulary, okay? So vocabulary, ease of execution. Sounds like you know what he's talking about because it's English. But what he's saying is he's saying, I, he's already had a great relationship with the seller. We've bought four properties from them on seller finance. So jumping into this property would be super easy because the relationship, the rapport, and more importantly, there the evidence that we execute on what we say we're gonna execute is already there. So ease of execution getting into this deal is super high versus let's go knock on the door next door and build a new relationship with a seller and a broker that we don't have before. We have that going for us in our favor. Does that now make sense? Uh, ease, yeah, well, so maybe, maybe. ease of execution. So we have ease of execution. We've got a really high leverage point right? Sellers are basically willing to walk away from that. But leverage point, Eric, translation means that we don't have to put a ton of money down. Okay. The seller is going to give us really good leverage, really good debt. They're going to let us structure in a way that we don't have to go and raise a ton of capital for this deal. For buying it. For buying it. And that's where we're going to, we're going to get to the bad part of this. And I want people to know how we look at deals and how Bo looks at deals for the team. So really good leverage, meaning we don't have to go to a bank and put 30% down and use credit and go do all of those types of things. We could probably get into this deal for, what would you say, 10% down? I think it was uh, 20. Okay, 20, they want 20% down. Yeah, maybe maybe it was at 15. I forgot the exact numbers. Uh, we were talking, I was talking to him, you know, maybe four or six weeks ago. But could you talk this seller down to 10%, you think? Um, probably. Okay, so their prop, what do you think the seller's big problem is? Where's the, what's their pain point? The building's 10% occupied right now, maybe 15% occupied. They just haven't been able to lease the property. They have a property management company internally that lost the contract and now they went out somewhere else. You know, there's some CapEx work that needs to be done to make the units habitable. And then there's, you know, light make ready stuff, like a, you know, a couple grand per unit. They just don't have the money to do it. So they're doing it, you know, one by one by one by one, leasing one, taking the money and then going to do another one, leasing it. So they're hemorrhage money. Okay. So ease of execution, seller would give us good leverage. We would get seller financing on the deal at a rate lower than what we could get right now at a bank. We wouldn't have to go through the whole approval process, all of those types of things. Let's say that we buy this thing. Hypothetically, we buy this thing for 2 million bucks. I know that's not the price, but let's say you buy it for 2 million bucks. You put $200,000 down. Now you're into the deal 200 grand. Is there a broker involved in this deal that would get paid out of that 200 grand on the seller side, or would it be direct to seller? Uh, broker. Okay. So broker would get paid out of that 200 grand just for the brokers that are watching this. Now we own the property. We have a vacant property, okay, with a payment. So that has to go into your underwriting. So how much money do you think we'd have to raise after acquisition for the CapEx? The CapEx, the negative carry, everything, maybe 500, 400. Okay, so 500. We'd raise, we would tell ourselves we'd need 400. We end up needing 500 because, you know, renovations, contractors are slow, hard to get materials, all that kind of stuff, right? So now you've had to raise 700 grand for this deal. Do we want to stomach that 700 grand ourselves or would we go raise money from our, the sub two community, Bo? Um, 
We would probably raise money, right? Yeah, we definitely wouldn't want to stomach it ourselves. And then the goal would be on this particular 30 unit to refinance it as quickly as possible. Do you think we could refinance in a year or two years if rates come down a little bit and pull out? Maybe two, you, okay, you so. need two. So on this particular deal, we could raise the 700 grand, 200,000 for the purchase, 500,000 for the CapEx and, and the carry and miscellaneous stuff. You're, you've got $700,000, either A, you bring in those people as equity partners or B, you pay simple interest that's freaking seven you know six thousand seven thousand dollars a month in just interest so could you stomach that yeah as long as you could get it released up and you could fill it up and you'd be able to at least cover your costs of holding that property with your underlying debt with the seller plus your carry for the 700,000 that you had to raise. Then the goal, I'm assuming the goal would go, we got to refinance this as fast as possible. Hopefully we can get the value of the property to go from 2 million to 2.6 and we could pull out three or $400,000 of that money, get more permanent financing, pay off the pri half the private money lenders with the bank loan and pay off the other half with maybe our own cash in a two-year time frame. Yeah, or um, lease it up, you know, uh, proof of concept and exit 18 months later. Just do the last couple miles of, you know, the sellers put several hundred thousand dollars into the property, but they're missing things that need to be done still. There's still work that needs to be done. Would you say that they're probably the biggest challenge that they have, Bo, is their inability to raise capital to get the projects finished? Because it seems as if they're just out of money. And if they knew how to raise capital like you and I do, you'd, you'd seem like they just finished the project. Well, they've already raised capital. Okay, and then so they just couldn't execute. They couldn't execute. Got it. So that's a good lesson for you as well. If you're getting into big projects like this, people go, I'm gonna start in multifamily right out of the gate. I'm like, really? Do you really wanna do that? Obviously, we would want to do that deal because we could raise the capital, finish the project, execute in a way that the sellers can't currently execute. Yep. We would sell the property off in 18 to, let's say, 36 months, yep. and we could make, you know, who knows, half a million bucks. Yeah. Okay, but why would we not want to buy the deal? What would keep us from buying the deal? Uh, wanting to buy something else that's better. Got it. I mean, it, it's... I think the allure of this property also is that you're all, we are already in this town. We've got how many units in this town? Uh, 31. Okay, we've got 31 units in Lubbock already. So we would double our footprint here in Lubbock and be able to use the same property manager and be able to utilize and, and share resources, you know, in that regard. And you'll have tenants that apply here that, are, you know, maybe we're full that we can push over to the other property and vice versa. Might not be the exact demographic wanting to live here as the other one, but you know, there might be a little bit of crossover there and that there might be some benefit. But if you're already in in town, you obviously want to expand. So guys, what we'll do is we're going to give you an actual underwriting video where we walk through and underwrite a video for you or underwrite a multifamily deal for you. We'll underwrite that deal. We won't give away address because obviously we might end up buying it. And this video might not go out for three years until we buy the deal. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But Bo will go through and go, here's the numbers. Here's why it works. Here's why it doesn't work. Here's the time horizon, all of those things. And give you guys a full, you know, checklist of how to underwrite a 30 unit multifamily property. So um, later, see ya.